Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. After having a look at the aviation and also the ground forces parts of the dev Q&A, it's time to now have a look at the other parts, uh, the helicopters, naval and also other. So let's get straight into it, so let's have a look what the questions are about helicopters. The first question is, with the announcement of Swedish ground forces, can we expect a Swedish helicopter tr uh, tree too, at least a premium helicopter in the meantime for support? And the answer is yes, most likely there will be Swedish helicopters in the game in the future. I really hope so, uh, because obviously one of the things that I am very much uh, care about in War Thunder is the idea of parity between nations. There needs to be a reason to play each nation, uh, there needs to be interesting stuff, whether it be ground or air or naval, and at the same time uh, there has to be equal balances uh, between these ideas, or at least a decent amount of vehicles, between them, so therefore there is a reason to play such nations such as Sweden. We already have an issue in War Thunder where a lot of players only play a few nations. We don't want that increased because then that means that a lot of the game just goes by the wayside. So. Knowing that Swedish helicopters are coming, I mean, uh, helicopters are still in a bit of an odd place because there are so many nations which don't have what I would consider as a full tech tree, but hopefully soon with the new updates that will be solved with all of the Apaches, which look like they're going to be coming in in probably around about the start of March. The next question is some helicopters could be fitted with electronic warfare packages and weapons. This could be a unique way to counter both advanced aircraft and radar SBAGs or, SLA or SAMs. Would this be considered for helicopters perhaps in the future? The answer is electronic warfare is very complicated but can be interesting. For helicopters, we haven't worked in this area in detail so far, but we may do in the future. Uh, for me, what I would do is I would just leave that out of here. Uh, we don't need that right now. There is already a lot of uh, ridiculous mechanics that helicopters have, wherever it is the tracking lock-on, whether it is the HUD display uh, when you know you can see what's going on, whether it be the automatic flares or the thermals on top of stuff such as the lock-on mechanics or the range finding and laser mechanics. There is a ton of stuff going for helicopters now. How about we start thinking about counters to these uh, mechanics for stuff on the ground instead of just adding more and more stuff to helicopters in hope that somehow this will somehow fix them in a meta which is always raging and always crazy at higher tiers. I would just wait for a very long time before we think about stuff like electronic warfare packages for this reason. The next uh, question is, with the advent of the Roycat, or the Roycat, being introduced to the UK tree, does this mean we could possibly see unique South African helicopters such as the Mi-24 Superhind or and the Danel Royvak or Royvolk. I'm not sure how you say that one. The answer is we don't exclude that possibility. So a non-answer. There is literally no point in that question or the answer. They've pretty much said uh, no comment. Uh, <laughs> you've picked a question so you can say no comment and uh, not giving a yes or a no answer. One of the interesting things is past the developers uh, a little bit ago was actually a South African airplane, the Danel AHCS2 Royvolk, uh, the Red Kestrel, which I'm pretty sure is the one talked about in here. So maybe in the future we'll see this one added to the game. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes uh, for these style of vehicles. Hopefully they work out a way of adding in these uh, minor nation tech trees in a more sustainable way instead of just throwing them at the major nation's trees. So that's all there is for the helicopter questions. But you do got to remember that there was quite a large helicopter question in the ground forces section uh, of the you know, of the dev Q&A, so yeah, it's just uh, one of those things. Actually, it was in the aviation section, uh, so there you go. Uh, you get an extra question there. Naval, though, has a decent amount of questions. The first one being, naval trees have expanded exponentially in the last year. We still have cases where rank 2 ships cost 270,000 RP, yet even the Admiral Hipper, Megami, Brooklyn, or the Brooklyn, <laughs> and the Kapayev, uh, which I suppose is supposed to be the 
Chapayev only cost 220,000 RP. There is no incentive to research the lower vessels anymore as destroyers and cruisers are more interesting, attractive, and often faster to research. Can you please review the naval economy in an upcoming update and make lower tiers more viable to research? The answers are, players progress in the fleet uh, is designed on principles different from aircraft and ground vehicles. The research process goes from left to right and from top to bottom so that with each rank is the last ship and the horizontal will be top vehicle. That's why their price is comparable and sometimes even higher than the price of the ships of larger classes. And for some players who don't like battles in larger ships, these ships are the main purpose of progress. One of the great things about the naval research model is that it is easier uh, than the other it is easier than aviation and also ground to be able to get into those higher echelons of the ranks and higher echelons of the BRs. A lot of people were talking about for many years that they wanted to play these larger ships. They wanted to play, you know, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, battleships, battle cruisers, stuff like that. And the way that Gajin has set up, you know, these research trees is now it is easier, you know, than ever to be able to get into top tier and also cheaper to do so as well. So it's just one of those things that now we have people saying well why can't these lower stuff also be cheaper than some of the higher things the idea of naval is not uh, to progress to the top brs the idea of naval is you play the stuff that you want to play and have fun with it instead of this constant idea that you know the top tier or top rank is the place where you want to be it's a mentality that is really poisonous uh, when it comes to war thunder in general a lot of people talking about how the you know, top rank, like in ground rank 7 or BR 10.3, that is the place where you go, that is the end game of the game. No, that's not how War Thunder works at all. What War Thunder should be about is finding interesting experiences and enjoying them or enjoying some historical vehicles or playing stuff that you've seen, you know, in life and want to try and get into it in a gaming sense. And if people could just take that idea and apply it to naval, you'll realize that with the system that we have, it's actually easier to play what you want to play. Yes, there are certain vehicles that are incredibly high in RP, and yes, they'll take a long time to grind out, but those vehicles still exist in ground and aviation, but they just exist at the higher echelons of the tree, so then you hit that wall, you know, rank 6 that a lot of people talk about, where you start ending up at these vehicles, where in naval you have a steady progression through the whole of the tech tree. I generally think the naval progression is so much better holistically compared to the other two sets and I just don't want to see that changed. On top of this as well, there is no incentive to research the lower uh, vessels anymore as destroyers and cruisers are more interesting, attractive, and often faster to research. This is a massively uh, obvious opinion because for me, I've been playing uh, for the last month uh, the US destroyers, the Japanese destroyers, the Soviet, um, British, and German destroyers to try and get a handle on destroyer gameplay, to try and uh, research, to be able to get some of the light cruisers and the heavy cruisers. And so far, you know, I've picked up a decent amount of the heavy cruisers. I've nearly spaded all the American destroyers. I've spaded all of the Japanese destroyers apart from one modification on the Akizuki. I've spaded half the German destroyers. I've spaded half the British ones and I've spaded half of the Soviet ones and I can categorically say from my opinion destroyer gameplay is incredibly boring and really really tiresome. It's actually one of the first times in War Thunder that I have got annoyed at the game because I am literally just doing the same thing every battle over and over and over again whereas at least in ground at least in aviation depending on what I'm fighting depending on what map I'm on the playstyle changes. In naval it doesn't. It's exactly the same every single time. I much prefer smaller boats, I much prefer the fast, the quick action, and also, you know, the different uh, styles of play. If you have battle boats or PT boats, or if you have just uh, different vessels, maybe some with armor, some with not, it's much more, much more interesting than, oh look, there's a big blob over there, let's try and torpedo it or shoot it, and hopefully it doesn't have as good of a rate of fire as I do, or let's hope its torpedoes are worse than mine. So yeah, uh, 
that is definitely opinion uh, from this question that is not shared by me. The next question is with update 1.95 we saw the arrival of the Swedish air tree and the start of the ground forces tree but do you have any long term ideas about any form of Swedish, Finnish, Scandinavian naval tree? The answer is, at the moment, another nation's fleet is in development, and it is too early to talk about the Swedish naval tree. I'm sure, as I said, that the idea is for every nation to get the four branches, you know, aviation, ground, helicopters, and then also uh, naval. And I hope that is the case for Sweden. I hope that is the case for every nation. We still have nations that have been in the game for a very long time, which don't have complete tech trees across the board. Hopefully uh, that will happen as we go along uh, in, you know, uh, 2020. If I look at the start of 2019 and compare it to the start of 2020, 2020 is looking a hell of a lot better uh, when it comes to general parity, parity across the board. So therefore, I think we're in a much better place now than we were a year ago when it came to what nations had. That still doesn't mean that, you know, the fight doesn't stop to be able to try and get these vehicles into the game and get them, you know, actually trying to balance through the nations, but at least we're in a better place. Uh, what is interesting is they talk about another nation's navy in developments. This could be talking about the Italian navy, which uh, there was a 4gamer.net article and also a few other interviews that were done uh, talking about what content was going to come in 2020. Uh, 4 Gamer said, what kind of content do you plan to implement after 2020? Also, if you have an outlook uh, such as, I want to add such new elements to the game, or I want to enhance these services, you know, please let us know. So, obviously this is translated uh, from, I believe, Japanese, so it's a little bit all over the place. But you have Mr. Trifonov, who is obviously a person employed by Gaijin. He says, 2020, we plan to implement the Swedish Army, the Italian Navy, helicop and helicopters, and modern jets. So, however, the order has not been decided yet. It's a complex and large game, so if you don't think and move it, your players will be puzzled by the new content. We believe that it is also important to continue to enhance the game uh, menu-wise, mode of navigation, and to make the UI more responsive and intuitive, so that the content can be enjoyed more comfortably. So, yeah, uh, they talk about there that the Italian Navy is the one which is being worked on, and we already have an Italian heavy cruiser, uh, which has been shown to us, uh, which, you know, is really nice to see. It shows that they're not just going to bring it in uh, with only, let's say, rank one and two. They're going to try and go whole hog and bring in the whole damn shebang, which is nice. Uh, the next question is, Torpedo warning seems to be very inconsistent, even with upgraded crew skills. Are there any plans to improve the system more? Perhaps friendly aircraft could play a role in the spotting mechanics. The answer is we have a different point of view on this. The warning system regarding enemy torpedoes is quite transparent. In RB, it is true to say that the range of automatic detection is much less than in AB due to its lower speed. The foam trace in the water can be detected at greater distance. If we are talking about detection assistance from aircraft, then it is possible, but not in a mode of with automatic detection of the torpedo markers, but with a mechanism similar to scouting mechanics in ground battles. This though is a nice idea and perhaps we will implement such functionality in the future. Yeah, there's nothing uh, wrong with more functionality to the map, like let's say if somebody could ping on the map that there are torpedoes in this location or where they're heading, I think that would be really nice to see. Uh, adding in something similar to the scouting mechanic for aircraft uh, to be able to deal with incoming munitions I think is a generally good idea. The other thing is I, I honestly don't have an issue uh, with the you know, uh, with the torpedo warning system. There are areas of each map where you know that torpedoes are going to be coming because they're generally straights between, you know, each of the spawns or between, you know, areas which are generally populated by a lot of your allies and also the enemies on the other side. So uh, from those positions, you know, it's not hard to uh, be able to dodge them. The other thing as well is uh, it's just one of those things that every so often you are going to get torped. Uh, it's just something you just got to take and something you got to take gracefully. Uh, but just make sure to spread out your torpedoes a decent amount when you fire them. So therefore you can annihilate the enemy. But for me, I, d I don't think there's too much of an issue. Uh, I I, after playing a lot of destroyers, I've worked out 
how to see you know torpedoes with obviously the white foam around the place and also uh, dodging them as well so yeah I, I don't think there needs to be a change i think it's fine uh, maybe people have issues against long lances the japanese torpedoes because they're incredibly fast but it should be okay the next question is will the inside view of naval vessels be refined can we anticipate bulkheads and separation of compartments and the answer is currently the bulkheads and decks are quite detailed they just don't show up in the x-ray view uh, but they are there you can see them in the hangar when you are using the protection analysis uh, analyze feature this is how the damage model of the ship modules look in 3d's max 3d's max so you can see right here what the general damage model looks like and i kind of understand why they don't show the bulkheads and also the separation of compartments uh, in the x-ray because it would be incredibly hard to tell what the hell is going on with it it would just be incredibly cluttered it would be kind of like how with uh, tanks where you can remove like the external armor or remove armored components so therefore you can see the stuff behind it i think you would have to do the same thing uh, with something such as the uh, ships i do think for clarity uh, for people um understanding where to shoot ships and understanding at you know what ships look like i think uh, adding them to the x-ray view would be good to do but it is also nice that it is in protection analysis as well just for the average player you know who wants to work out where to shoot certain machines it also looks incredibly beautiful even though this is kind of low res you can still see how much detail goes into stuff uh, such as the damage model of these incredibly large ships the next question is why is the choice between shells in the fleet limited by two types after all the buttons three and four are free as opposed to multi turret tanks etc buttons <laughs> and the answer is buttons three and four are currently not free and yeah they're not uh, they are responsible for choosing the type of auxiliary caliber shells this is a technical limitation and perhaps in the future uh, we will be able to remove it but for that uh, will require specific changes to the game code uh, so this is something that would be nice to change but it seems like it's one of those things that they would have to go in and change uh, which may take a little bit longer since it's uh, at least the way that they've written it here it sounds like more of a fundamental change to how the gameplay works i mean the way to fix it in my opinion or the way to do it would be when you have your primary uh when you have your primary gun selected just keep one and two the uh selection uh buttons uh for you know your ammunition or one two and three and then when you s switch to your secondaries uh, then one two and three once again are uh, selecting that uh, guns types uh, certain ammunition so you keep these selections to one two and three and uh you just uh, change the guns depending on what uh, ammunition you want to change. I'm guessing this is probably their idea too. Uh, it's just not as simple as I'm, you know, saying, which might be a bit of a problem. The last question. Uh, which is in the other or the miscellaneous part is a question of do you have plans to introduce new squadron vehicles most of most people have most of them by now the answer is yes we have plans to add squadron vehicles on a regular basis so I'm not sure about the most people have most of them by now but at least in uh, techies or techies yes. um, I've had mine for around about three months now uh, so I've been, you know, playing the game actively and not getting any squadron RP rewards towards squadron vehicles because I already have all of them unlocked. I think a system where they add a new vehicle every month would be the way forward. Uh, I Or even if they added three in every, you know, three months, I think that would be kind of nice. But right now it is definitely true that there is nothing the research is going towards. I really like the squadron reward system. I think it's really cool. I like the the idea of squadron rp i like the idea of being able to research stuff outside the normal research which is just tech tree research and hopefully soon we see some new squadron vehicles to try and complement that anyway that is the dev q a in its entirety uh, there isn't really anything i would say to argue about about the helicopters or the naval portion uh, most of it is pretty good questions most of it is pretty good answers and pretty solid uh, so hopefully uh, in the 
coming weeks we have another one of these uh, with another set of questions and also we should be getting some dev blogs soon so look forward to all of that wonderful stuff i hope you all have a wonderful day and i'll see you next time i'd just like to thank ambrosius mcclellan b young blackie Chris Giltnane, Daniel Stanton, Jay Wilt, John Ryman, Martinez, Moxie, Super Cacti, Trigger Hippie, Eugene's Terry, and also Elove Goat and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.